people who are not physicians or not clinic, clinicians of some type will ask me why I left. But clinicians, or especially physicians, who find out that I've left, they ask me how I left. Diane Shannon had been practicing internal medicine for three years when she made the difficult decision to quit. It may seem surprising that a person who spent so much time training for a degree in medicine could simply walk away, but the stresses associated with being a physician are much higher than in other professions. A recent study by the American Medical Association found that half of surveyed physicians reported at least one symptom of burnout, loss of enthusiasm for work, feelings of cynicism, or a low sense of personal accomplishment. It's really a, a profession where repeated trauma is part of the job. The problem is particularly severe for doctors at the front lines of care. For Shannon, the everyday stresses of internal medicine mounted, taking a toll on her physical and emotional health. I could remember the potassium levels or the chloride levels or the blood counts on every single one of my patients, but I couldn't remember where I parked my car, and I couldn't remember my zip code, and I couldn't remember my mother's birthday. Eventually, it became too much to bear. It was not a decision I made easily. I mean, I looked at my health and I looked at my, you know, what I saw in the future going forward and it didn't look like things were gonna change in terms of the practice environment. Since leaving medicine, Shannon has made a successful career for herself as a freelance healthcare writer. Today I have a full life and I have hobbies and I have connections and I have time with people. I don't feel the pressure and the that level of uh, chaos that I felt before. But most physicians dealing with burnout are not so lucky. 45% of female physicians reported burnout compared to 37% of male physicians. The women physicians had a lot of outside responsibilities as well. And the, and the number of hours that they spent outside was more than the male physicians. The culture of medicine makes it difficult to admit to personal difficulties and ask for help. Having been in the military myself, I think the profession of medicine is like being in the military these days. Showing that you have a problem or talking about it is really a perceived sign of weakness and not strength. Like we can take on anything, we can, you know, we're independent, we're individuals, we're smart, we can go and we can figure out anything and we can handle it on our own. I think we're so used to, to, to being in the caregiver role, it's hard to relinquish control and say, take care of me. They feel trapped. And what happens is when someone gets burned out, they start using maladaptive coping strategies like using drugs or alcohol or engage in acting out behavior or become socially isolative and they start to become depressed, apathetic, they lose interest in their work. They also feel that they really aren't contributing anymore in a, in a professional way to the betterment of humanity. Shannon hopes to use her background in medicine and skills as a healthcare communicator to become a voice for physicians who cannot speak out for themselves. Shannon has been contacted by many doctors who are in distress. Hi, Dr. Shannon. Hope you don't mind an email from a stranger, but I recently read your article and I wanted to send you a big thank you. I went into medicine for all the right reasons, but find myself after only six years approaching burnout. Much of what you wrote are thoughts I have had, but I felt like I would be a failure if I were to actually say them out loud. I feel frustrated by the lack of support from the administration. I'm very grateful to know I'm not alone in these thoughts and I really appreciate your words. To prevent stress and burnout, Shannon and other healthcare advocates try to encourage positive coping mechanisms. If you talk to enough colleagues, you're gonna find one or two pearls of wisdom that are gonna help get you through. So not being isolated, not being alone is really, really important. And then if you do feel things need to be changed, don't be afraid to ask for them. Don't wait for a problem to come up. Take good care of yourself. If you don't take care of yourself well, you won't be able to take care of other people. The stressors on physicians have only increased. So it's a bit of a perfect storm right now. More to do, less money to do it with, greater expectations on the parts of the patients and their families. Doctors, um, I won't say we're an endangered species, but we're a distressed 
species right now, a highly distressed species, and you can't do enough to enhance the well-being of physicians right now. The silent epidemic of physician burnout is slowly getting attention, but there is still a long way to go.